Good afternoon, good evening. Dave here. Hope everyone is doing well on YouTube. Today is a not a very special occasion. You wouldn't I wouldn't call it special. But um since about what Sunday Today's Wednesday, so it, it, around the Sunday, around three, three o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, I got as I patrolled my area of, of the work at, at the ranch. I got stung by a spider. It must have clung to my pants when I got out to check the fences, the gates. Um. Because when I went back to the truck and, you know, I parked the truck where I can relax and just be watching all the, all the entrances, I could feel something in between my jeans and my leg that was, um, felt like, like an insect or something. So I, I, I did the natural thing and just pretty much banged on my leg to kill the, the insect. Well, by banging on that leg, Causes causes the uh, spider to sting me, um, and left a very very dramatic view on it, and as you can see, um. Minutes afterwards, I got stung. I started getting the fever, started getting chills. Um, I was sweating a lot. I figured it must have been a very dangerous spider because I was getting very, very sick. I notified my supervisors, the, owner, the owners of the ranch. Um, it's pretty close to 4.30. By the time all of this was happening, I even came outside to try to walk around and just thinking of the fact that, I, that I've just been poisoned by some type of spider. I started vomiting all over the place. Couldn't stop vomiting. And I was burning with chills. My fever went up high. Um... It's an experience that I would never wish anyone to to go through. The ranch life is a beautiful life. Believe me, it's I totally love it. I know there's dangers involved. I know that I'd be exposed to all types of, all types of attacks. Whether it be an insect or an animal, or a human, you know, we're, we're out there in the middle of nowhere, you know, and we're taking care of these ranchers, we're, we're night watchmen, um, I finally sent, sent a text message to my supervisors, that I'm going home, I'm, I, 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 it was like maybe half an hour before my shift was over, um, I felt terrible. I was burning in fever. I came home. I tried to go to sleep. I um, I woke up around eight, nine o'clock in the morning. My family members took me to. The, to our family doctor. Our family doctor saw the, immediately saw my injuries, and I had told him I think it was a spider. It couldn't have been anything else. And as I rolled down the, since I used the same pants, I rolled down the pants so you can get a closer look. Out pops a dead spider. It was a larger version of a either a black widow or something close to it. But as far as I know. Black widows usually run away from humans. You know, they they they'll they'll sting you unless it's a, as a last resort, and 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 their venom does kill people. 
Um, this must have been a very old spider. The young spiders are the ones that are extremely dangerous. I um I saw the I saw the worry in his eyes when his popped out, his eyes popped out and said, uh, "No, we we can't do nothing here. We need to rush you to the hospital." So pretty much, I was rushed to the hospital. Um, by the time I got there, they had a room ready for me. They had a they had a room. Everything was ready. Everything was pretty much prepared. They knew why I, why I was going. My um, my blood pressure went up, my heart rate went up. The venom on that spider must have caused a heart rate to go up even higher than, than normal. Um, excuse me that I yawn so much, but I haven't been able to get too much sleep. I went through a lot of torture at the hospital. It wasn't easy either. It wasn't, it wasn't very easy. Um, many specialists came in. Everything from drawing blood for me. I mean, hell, they even left marks on my, on my uh, arms. And then I had, I had an IV started right here. You know, and it was all taped up and everything. This is a, the next night at the hospital. It was all taped up. And as I'm lying in bed, I'm awoken by one of the uh, technicians. He says, don't worry about it, relax. I, he started putting tapes to put sensors to run a diagnostic on my heart. So I figured, okay, that's fine. So I went back to sleep. So when I saw him pulling the cables out, he was done. He was done with me. I opened my eyes and I realized that the IV, he had pulled the IV by accident. He had pulled the IV. And I told him, sir, you, you, you uh, pulled my IV out. He said, don't worry about it. I'm going to get a nurse to come by and put it back in. Okay, no big deal. Well, I went back to sleep. I went back to sleep. Immediately, I started dreaming. I started dreaming. And then suddenly, in that dream, I hear my own voice saying, David, David, wake up. David, wake up. Wake up, David. David, wake up. And I'm, as I'm waking up, I'm looking at, at myself full of blood all over. Blood on the floor, uh, blood on the bed. It's like, what the heck's going on? And I'm thinking, I'm dreaming. No, I'm not dreaming. This is real. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The guy who ran the treatment on my heart did not notify the nurse and even though during the time that I that he said it's not bleeding anyways I went back to sleep and it started to bleed it started to bleed like a faucet I'm looking at my hand and it's like it's like a faucet of blood coming out of me and as much as I tried to stop it it would go the other way it was like a pressure this vein this particular vein right here was was pretty has a good pumping system. And I had a puddle of blood in the floor. I was still dripping. Uh, there was blood all over the sheets, blood all over the, the pillow already. And and I'm and I and I and I, I'm looking for the button to press for the nurse. And I finally find it and I tell them, Miss, I need somebody to come in here quick. Please, quick. I need, he said, what do you need? Please, I need your help, please. Oh, we'll be there in just a minute. So they, they, they hang up and three minutes go by and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die here. I'm gonna die here. I'm, I'm starting to feel weak of how much blood I was losing. That I decided to get up, and I was, and mind you, I'm in my, in my hospital dress thing, 
the gar the, the garner the, uh, the the garment that they put on you for hospitals, and I'm I'm starting to walk out of the room towards the nurses station, and I'm leaving a trail of blood, and not just ordinary. I'm leaving a, a whole foot a foot long of blood right behind me, and I'm telling I'm telling them, I needed your help, and I'm losing. I'm losing my strength, and I'm losing my strength. I'm starting to feel sleepy again, and they grab me quickly, and they take me back into the bedroom. Uh, but 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 they keep me up. They keep me. They keep telling me, "Wake up, wake up, stay awake, stay awake, stay awake." And they realize what happened, and they immediately started applying more pressure. And then uh, immediately, uh, the girl says some code on on the radio, and. Nine more LVNs and nurses arrive real quick and realize that though my room looks like a crime scene. Blood all over the place. The hallway on the hospital, blood all over the place. And pr pretty much practically almost ran out of blood. Um, they, they managed to clean everything up Two of the nurses, one one of the nurses was assigned to me, and another nurse from another floor, pretty much, with all the loving care necessary, start putting the ID back, and profusely, profusely kept apologizing. We're very sorry. How did this happen? He said, the guy from, from the heart thing was putting those things on there, and he accidentally snapped my ID off, but he said he notified you all. He said, we haven't been notified by anybody. Well, then, it's his fault, and I would have died here if it wasn't for that small voice that was in me, because I was already asleep. It wasn't for that small, small voice that I heard that said, David, wake up, David, wake up. If I would have woken up, I would have bled to death, and I wouldn't be here making this video. That's where I keep realizing maybe I would have survived the spider's thing. Because I definitely would have not survived the the accidental release of my IV. Um, for, for the longest time they kept saying they were sorry, they were sorry, and they, it would never happen again, and Please do not notify my doctor. And I was like, you know what? Can I sign myself out? I need to leave this hospital. I, I, now I'm afraid of my. Now I'm afraid that I might even. I might not even survive till the morning. I said, no, no. This this hardly ever happens. And blah blah blah. And we totally apologize. And and you know they're they're very worried. I said, don't don't worry about it. I'm I'm not saying anything. I just please just. Um, I was, uh, and NB, NBM, nothing by mouth. I had, they had orders of nothing by mouth, which means that I, 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 I couldn't eat for three days that I was there. I couldn't even drink water. I, I told him, there's no way I can survive this. How, how can you tell me nothing? Uh, the the food okay. I I I can survive with I can survive without food for a week if necessary. But the water part, I sometimes sleep when I come home and sleep. I I breathe through my mouth. My mouth dry, tends to dry up. My my conscience seems to always wake me and tell me, hey, you didn't put some water in your mouth because you're gonna choke yourself. So well, that's that's the order that we have. He said, "Well, that's fine," and I, I didn't do what they said. Anyways, I went to the sink and at least put water in, in my mouth. I didn't swallow it or anything, but it was just enough for me to wet my mouth, and my mouth was very dry. <clears throat> the very next morning, the heart specialist comes in and starts. Measuring. It's kind of like one of those uh, gynecologists that 
rub some of that gel on on the on the lady, on the lady's pregnant uh, when when she's pregnant and and she and they rub that gel so that you can see the the function of the baby. Well, they they did the same thing except they were doing it to my heart. My heart was beating a little bit faster because of the reaction of the of the poison that was injected to me by that spider. I was not in good shape. And, um, I figured it probably won't be long before I, before I go join the, before I go join my dad up in heaven. The spider did a number on me. And then, and then these people, uh, wanted me to keep quiet because one of their technicians accidentally loses my IV. I kept it quiet up to now that I'm saying it here on this video. I could probably label this video as confessions of a of a patient dying. No, I better not. I'm at home now after the three days in the hospital. I'm at home now and I'm thankful that I'm alive. And I pray to the Lord that please allow me time to get well rested and I will continue to always set a good example to the people of the earth. And allow me to be a better person, a better, better person, and even to the people around me. I was close to death twice. Twice, an angel of the Lord came down and said, "David, wake up! It's not your time to die." You to wake up and you tell those people to bring you something to stop this bleeding. So that's how I have this video. I'm now at home. I'm relaxing. I have um, I have a few more days that I can recover at home. Now they have me, they have me connected to a, kind of like a monitor, a, a heart monitor, and it runs through a cell phone, it runs through the internet, so they're watching, they're monitoring my, my heart movement from the main station, wherever they're at, so I'm, unfortunately now I feel like I'm handicapped, and now I got a, I got something that's monitoring my heart until they say, until they say that I'm fine, then, then I can take it off. I want to thank everybody for watching this video. It's just, uh, I wasn't really going to make one, but I figured y'all should know what's going on. Why I've been absent for, for a while, where I normally sometimes make daily videos. Whether they're boring or not, I try to make as many videos as I can. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to bed and, and relax, go to sleep. Hopefully tomorrow I'll feel a lot better. Y'all take care of yourselves. Maintain your special distancing, social distancing. And may God bless all of you.